Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're gonna have a look at how we can do a simple rotation animation of an object. So we're gonna grab one of these images we have up in our library here down to the timeline, and we're gonna look at how we can animate this. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and stretch out the duration of my, my clip a little bit so we've got a bit to work with. So very simply, if we wanna rotate this image itself, there's a couple of ways of doing that. One is to do a transition animation. So if we come across to our transitions, on the right here, then we can do some movement animations and that will happen at the beginning or the end of your clip. So you can see I've got the rotation animation here. If I bring this onto the clip, then basically it's gonna rotate in. So you can get a simple animation like this. You don't have a huge amount of control. You can change, as you can see up in the inspector, whether it goes clockwise or counterclockwise. And that is pretty much it. It's just going to rotate in. It's not going to rotate around a full 360 degrees. So we're going to have a look at how we can have a bit more control over an animation. So we'll close up our transitions on the right here. And we're going to do this with keyframes. So the first thing to do is to bring a playhead to the beginning of your clip. And we're going to come up to our inspector. And we're looking for the video inspector. So we're going to come down to the transform properties here. And basically you can see we've got a rotation option. Now we can rotate up here in the inspector just by moving that round. Or we can also reset our parameter there too to change it back to the original. Or we can come to our transform properties. We've got crop selected here at the moment just to the bottom left of our viewer. If we change that to transform, then you can see we have some scale options, these blue dots at the edge, and also the rotation option that you can see here. Now, one nice thing to do with this ball would be to rotate it in the middle and also to get rid of the background. So before we add any keyframes, we're going to have a look at how we can do that. So the first thing to do is just to position our anchor point as close to the center as possible. So you can see we've got our position points up here at the top in the transform properties. And then we've also got the anchor points here, which allow us to move that ball up and down. And we're just going to kind of eyeball the, the center of it and we can modify this a little bit later if we need to. So now you can see as I'm rotating that, it's rotating a bit more around the center of that. I'm gonna reset the rotation here. So it's back to the middle there. And so now I wanna remove that background. So I'm gonna come across to my effects here and we're gonna come down to masks and keying. So in here, you can see we've got corner mask, a draw mask and some other different luma keys and stuff like that. What we're looking for here is the shape mask. And if we drag this onto our ball here, you can see we also wanna turn off our transform properties, the blue dot there, and that will bring our shape mask up on screen. So again, I'm gonna position this in the middle of this ball, and then we're just gonna bring the edges of this all the way to the edge of the ball, and from the top and bottom as well. We might wanna zoom in a bit to see how we're doing in terms of the accuracy of that. So you can see I can get nice and close to the edge. For this type of object, I would tend to clip it a bit at the edge just so that I can have a nice kind of crisp, clean edge. We can work on refining that a bit more, but for the moment that's gonna work. And then we'll come up to the top left and it's this little white dot here. We'll zoom out a little bit here. This little white dot that will allow us to curve those edges to match the edge of our ball. So we're just gonna, again, eyeball it until that curve matches the edge of our ball. And then either in the viewer here or up in the inspector, we're gonna turn down the feather and that's just gonna sharpen up the edge of the ball there. Now we can turn on and off the shape mask. What I'm actually gonna do here is give a little bit of a blue background that matches the color of the water. And what that will do is mean that it will stop any kind of halo that you get around the edge of that. So I'm gonna come up to my titles and generators and we'll just scroll down to the generators here and we're looking for our solids. We're gonna grab a custom solid, drop it behind here. And with this selected, I'm gonna to come to my color box up in the inspector for this new custom box, which I've dropped behind the ball there. Click on that, and then I can use the eyedropper to select this watercolor in the background. So you can see it closely matches it. It's not perfect, but we'll keep that halo from happening around the ball. So now if we turn back on the shape mask and then go back to fit, you can see we've got that ball 
nicely in there. So now if we go back to our transform properties, you can see when we rotate it, we're just rotating the ball on its own. We can also increase the scale here with these blue buttons at the edge. And I'm gonna get this to rotate and then stop in place. So the way I like to do this, and I'm gonna reset the parameter here, is I wanna think about where my rotation is gonna stop. So if it's gonna rotate for say just over a second, then I'm gonna get this all positioned until I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna come up and add a keyframe either in the inspector on the right here or with the transform properties selected, I can add keyframes up here at the top left. This sometimes disappears, but you can always find it again by toggling on and off the transform properties. So we have our keyframe added. If we come back to the beginning now, we can rotate this. So let's just rotate it by 360-ish, so 365.9. And now when we play it through, our ball's gonna animate and then stop. So simple animation. If you wanna kind of see how the animation is working on the timeline, then we can right click here and we can go to show video animation. That's gonna show our animation properties. And if we stretch the gap between these keyframes, it's gonna slow down the animation. So we're still moving between the same two points, but actually the animation is gonna happen a little bit slower. If we wanna speed it up, then we can do one of two things. We can either move the keyframe closer together, or if we have a longer animation, then we can come up to the top here. I wanna make sure that when I'm adding the rotation points, I'm always on one of the keyframes that I've added. It's kind of hard to see the one at the beginning, but there is a little white dot of a keyframe there. And basically I can move between these keyframes. And now if I keep increasing this, go up to something like 2000, then you'll see basically now it's gonna move more quickly. So if we wanna remove animation from a certain point in this, we can delete the keyframes. So to delete a keyframe, use the arrows to move between the keyframes here in the inspector or up at the top left here. And then we can click here to remove the keyframe and that will stop the animation dead. If we wanna undo that, Command and Z, and we can then get that animation back in there. Now, sometimes with a little bit of animation, you might find you wanna add some motion blur because it looks a little bit funny when this is animating and all the lines are sharp. So I'm gonna come across to my effects. We're gonna to come to blurs here, and I'm gonna add a radial blur. So basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it look like it's got that blur on it. It's gonna make it look a little bit more realistic but when it stops, I want that blur to disappear. So basically, I'm gonna come here and we'll add a keyframe just before the animation ends. And I'm gonna come up to my radial blur, add a keyframe in here, come ahead to where the ball has stopped moving, and then we'll turn that blur right down. So it'll be sharp again. So what we'll see here is the blur and then it will become sharp when it stops. Obviously we can add some movement in there as well. So I can add keyframes for other transform properties. So say for the position, I could add some position animation there and we'll basically add in a little move onto the canvas of this ball. So now I've got our spinning ball and it stops. So that's how to animate an object basically. Keep an eye on your keyframes, start to learn how they, they work on the timeline, how they move around, and also be wary of moving to a spot where you think the keyframe is and then making a change. I'm just gonna take the transform options off here. But basically, if we accidentally add a keyframe somewhere in the middle here, then we can get some strange things happening but we can also speed up and slow down the animation too. So you can see we've added a bit of kind of variable animation in there by rotating this and adding those extra keyframes in, which we may not necessarily want. So you can see we can get some cool kind of effects in there with the ball moving and then have it nice and sharp at the end. So we've got our radial blur, got our transform in there. 
We also have our options for our radial blur and our shape mask up here. And it looks pretty nice because it's kind of on this blue background. That's a quick overview of how to animate a object um, in a rotation, how to add a little bit of movement in there and how to separate it out from the background of the original image that we had. Hopefully that's useful. If you do have any questions about animation in Final Cut Pro, then please do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.